Welcome to Cadence Design Systems Fidelity Tutorial Tuesday, where we show you how to use a feature or demonstrate a technique in just a few minutes. In this video, we will cover a few updates to automatic surface mesh, assisted quilt assembly, and T-Rex, which were included in Fidelity Pointwise 2023.2. The first update we are going to show today is for the mapping filters in automatic surface mesh. So let's take this into automatic surface mesh and let's look at our mapping filters. So if you have a mapping filter that is set to type force um, with a prescribed number of subdivisions, such as we have here, so we have the trailing edge set to force with four subdivisions, it is now going to scale appropriately by the refinement factor. So if we initialize this surface mesh right now with a refinement factor of one, we get four subdivisions. If we instead use two, we'll get eight. The second update is for assisted quilt assembly. So let's take this model into assisted quilt assembly and go over to the boundaries tab. So if you recall from the initial release of assisted quilt assembly with 2023.1, this geometric trim classification contains all boundaries that were created using the new trim geometrically feature. For 2023.2, this classification has been expanded to also include boundaries created using the other two trimming operations. So for this model, I use trim geometrically to bisect the trailing edge. I also use trim by surfaces to trim the model with a plane, and I drew some curves on the surface and used trim by curves. And we can see they're all being identified in this geometric trim classification. And finally, improvements were made to T-Rex performance in the form of multi-threading several time-intensive operations and also by employing collision prediction. So the question is, what is collision prediction? And to explain it, let's take a look at the interior of this block. This is the uh, Wing Store T-Rex tutorial file, and we're just going to enable a cut. Look at the cell types because it really shows where T-Rex is and where the isotropic region is. And what we see is that in convex regions like the upper side of the wing, T-Rex is able to grow all the way to isotropy without encountering any collisions. But in concave regions, such as between the underside of the wing and the pylon, and in narrow gaps, such as between the pylon and the store, T-Rex has to stop early because of collisions with neighboring or opposing fronts. With collision prediction enabled, T-Rex will use the prescribed initial spacing and growth rate to estimate the distance at which a collision is likely to occur. And it'll do this for each point in the advancing front. It then disables collision checks, which can be very computationally expensive, until the advancing front either gets close to the estimated collision distance or close to isotropy. The result is that for each advancing node in your mesh, collision checking is only turned on for the final few layers before the local front stops. On average, this results in a two to three times speed up for the T-Rex portion of unstructured block initialization for large meshes. As you can see in this chart, it does scale with mesh size. Here we took the test case one mesh family for the AAA's fifth high lift prediction workshop and re initialized the blocks in both 2023.1 and 2023.2. You can see that the more refined levels of the mesh family observed greater speed up than the coarser levels. So if we go into the unstructured block solver, the T-Rex tab, we can see that we can toggle collision prediction on or off. It's on by default from the advanced frame. And we can also combine it with the layer subdivisions greater than one for an additional boost to speed up. If you like this video, be sure to click the thumbs up button or subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, drop us a line below or connect with us via LinkedIn, which is linked in the description. Thank you all and have a pleasant Tuesday.